coming up. So it's your understanding that you and Randy Boissano and Mr. Anderson are 50-50 partners in the company. That is not correct. The shares are held by 2256956 Alberta Limited. Who owns that number of company? Do. Cute. So there's an obvious contradiction here that is public. And while it is true, you may want to appear before this committee and act as though this is simply a conservative witch hunt. I would tell you from my perspective as a New Democrat, this doesn't pass the sniff test. So please explain this very obvious contradiction between your testimony and what is being stated here. Gowie Group thinks it's you. Global News can't track down who the upper Randy is. Verandi, who's texting, happens to be referencing Eastern Time. You happen to be uh, a member of Parliament serving a lot of your time in Ottawa. You said you were a partner. The text message references a partner. This is a small operation. You have a 50% stake in the fact that you can't identify who the other Randy is doesn't pass the smell test. Say, Randy, your testimony today has not helped you out. Thank you. Yes, sir. No. So I'll ask again, Minister, ahead, Brock, you're yes. laughing at the whole process, no, uh, but I'm... Canadians are not laughing at no, you, sure. and they're not siding with you. Did you reach out to Mr. Anderson this morning after you read the Global News report, yes or no? Minister Boston, do you know what the 28th most popular boy's name in 1956 was? <laughs> I do not. Randy. Huh. You know how many Randys were born that year? I do not. 28,000. That's a lot of Randys. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Being open and transparent, meeting all the obligations, and having the ethics commissioner see no need to evaluate my business affairs are simply inconvenient obstacles that can get in the way of a social media clip. Let's move on to questions, Mr. Chair, after which I'll get straight back to work serving Edmontonians, Albertans, and all Canadians. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Boissano. And before I go to Mr. Barrett, I'm just going to remind you, sir, that you are here today because of a motion that was passed by this committee, uh, a majority of members on this committee. Mr. Barrett, you have six minutes. Go ahead. Minister, uh, there's fraud and another Randy in a partner call at your company. What's the other Randy's last name? So, Mr. Barrett, I do not know the name of that person, as I stated in my opening statements. And uh, before a committee, I have no relationship, no operational uh, role with GHI. I do so, not know that person in question. That person is not me. What's your percentage stake in the company? As has been disclosed in my, dis as, in my disclosure to the Commission of Ethics, it is 50% stake in GHI that is held in my holding company. Who are the partners of the company? I do not know. It is Mr. Anderson, to my degree, to my knowledge, is the only administrator of that company. So I, have no, I have no connection other than holding the shares to that company, Mr. Barrett. Holding half of the shares? Half of the shares are in my numbered company, as disclosed to the do, Commissioner of Ethics. Do you know who holds the balance of the shares? Uh, when I was involved, the last time I looked, it was Mr. Anderson. So it's your understanding that you and... Randy Boissano and Mr. Anderson are 50-50 partners in the company. That is not correct. The shares are held by 2256956 Alberta Limited. Who owns that number of company? Do. Cute. It's not this, cute, Mr. A, Barrett. There's a question is... about there's a question about this other Randy that's been reported. I know the the contention, sir, is that um, you'd like for this to be uh, something that the opposition has created, uh, but this is reported in the media. And uh, the media has, um, has uncovered a number of things, including um, text message exchanges with someone um, who's uh, named by one of your partners uh, as a partner, and they refer to Randy. And no last name of that Randy is available. The only Randy we know that's involved with the company um, is a minister in the Trudeau government. Who were the partners in that company in 2022? I do not have that information, Mr. Baird, but let me correct the record, Mr. Chair. To your question, I'll go through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am not the person in those texts. Mr. Anderson confirmed that it's not me. And I have a quote from the article that you're talking about, Mr. Barrett, which is from the Gowie Group, which says, we have had no direct communication with Mr. Boston now at any point in our dealings with Stephen and the companies <coughs> because I have had no active role in GHI since I was elected in 2021. Okay. You said publicly you didn't have anything to do with Stephen Anderson's business deals on behalf of your PPE uh, company, Global Health Imports. Is that right? I have had no active role 
in GHI since I was elected. And related, Mr. Barrett, you said yourself in your question this morning, Mr. Chair, may I deals, answer? Chair, um, I just, gave, I just gave, hang on a sec. So we'll, let's stop the clock. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask Mr. Barrett to continue. He has another question. Minister, uh, but chair, for an on, answer. But Go ahead. On, on the, the way the meeting is going to run, I gave Mr. Boissonneau more than twice the amount of time to respond to both of my previous questions than I spent in asking the questions. So if I have a short question and Mr. Bo the, the minister uh, wants to run the clock, that's obviously uh, not going to demonstrate uh, the, fairness. In, and in I, the I think I made uh, I think that I made that pretty clear at the top of the meeting, uh, Mr. Barrett. That the expectation, my expectation today, is that as members ask questions, the e an equal amount of time is going to be given for those responses, Minister. And I ask that uh, all members respect that. I'm not going to be the timekeeper here, uh, other than the six minutes. But if I see that a member is going uh, going a little bit off in terms of time, then I will intervene. Mr. Barrett, How much time? Uh, you got three minutes and 16 seconds. Go ahead. Related to deals with the Gowi group, you didn't have anything to do with the alleged wire fraud? Mr. Barrett, I have been very clear that I've had no operational dealings with GHI since I was elected. And you, sir, indicated off the start that the Randy in the article was not me. So that company alleges that you were involved. Are they telling the truth? That company is not... Um, they're not correct because I've had no correspondence from them. And okay. Mr. Anderson indicates very clearly in this morning's article that that Randy is not me. So we have text messages, text messages implicating you, sir, in this wire fraud, and it was carried out by your business partner to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And one of them reads, and I quote, what is going on? I just received this from Randy. It's 1314 MST and 1514 EST. It literally takes 10 seconds to complete a transfer. I'm telling you, we are not allocating like this. Please reach out and see what the reason is now. You assured me this was done this morning, first thing, and allowed you to hold this stock today. It's midday and nothing is completed. I'm calling Felix to discuss, be available for a partner call in 15 minutes, end quote. Sir, it seems like you're trying to conceal your involvement in a matter of fraud. Why? Wow. Michael, Mr. Mr. Chair, that is completely beyond the pale. It's completely false, and it's not true. The article states very clearly that the Gowie Group had no contact with me, which is true, and Mr. Anderson indicated that this is, an, this is a different Randy. Mr. Barrett, your first name is Michael. Mr. Cooper's first name is Michael. Are we to confuse your two identities here at committee when you ask questions of me that are spurious in nature? Well, there are, I look there's forward, more than one Mr. Randy Chair, here. I look no forward, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Chair, Mr. Wassano being in opposition my answer. And having the he opportunity to have a very long question, to, Mr. Chair. Yeah, he asked a very long question. I have and more And I seconds. realize that, Minister. Thank you, Mr. So, Chair. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. So there Mr. are Chair, other, there the are other, I have time on the clock to answer that question. There are other texts as well that outline how quickly you wanted this wire transfer to go through. Mr. Barrett, and that is not me, and you cannot, the put, question, you cannot state that for the record. Can we, uh, not true, we, Mr. Chair. We, just that hang is on not a true, sec. Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm going to – look, I, I thought I made my expectation very clear at the beginning that uh, questions will be asked and time will be given to respond to that. I am going to Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett, Minister, please don't inter intervene. I'm going to ask the same of the questioners as well. Mr. Barrett, go ahead. You've got a minute and 12 seconds, sir. Like the lack of respect for a procedure at committee, we've seen the same lack of adherence to ethics rules. The minister talked about Canada's stringent ethics rules. His uh, government, of course, including Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, has twice been found guilty of breaking those laws. And that's why we have questions about alleged law breaking um, by, uh, by our witness, by the minister. The company has been trying to get the money back, the company that was defrauded of $500,000 from your business. Where did the money Mr. from the Mr. Chair, chair, it is a chair, a point of I, order, chair. He is not stating facts, and he, I cannot let falsehoods go, Mr. Chair. But he didn't finish his question. You're going to have ample opportunity to 30 answer. seconds was the length of my question. I know you're protecting question. his and clips, I, Mr. No, chair, no, but he's actually, stating I'm falsehoods. Not actually, I'm not actually Mr. Boisseau. I'm so actually... So we have a corrupt minister from a corrupt actually, government. That's not true. That's that's that is point simply beyond order, the Mr. Chair, that is outrageous behavior by that member. Mr. Barrett. Can I have my time? I've asked for two points of order. I'm going to go on your point of order. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. I have never in my almost three years of, of public service, seen such disrespect Point of order. by a minister Point of order. for the procedures Point of here order. at committee. He's constantly talking okay. over the witness, and now he's I've, talking over the chair. I've got, I've got it is conduct order. unbecoming. I've got your point of order, Mr. Brock. Uh, I appreciate that. Mr. Barrett, you were at 34 Point. seconds in your intervention. 
So I'm going to ask you to ask your question. And point of order. Any, sorry, go ahead, uh, Mr. House Father. Mr. Chair, referring to someone as corrupt is unparliamentary. I would ask that you order it be withdrawn. Sorry, ask that I order it what? I would ask that you ask Mr. Barrett to withdraw those comments. That is unparliamentary to refer to someone as corrupt. Yeah, Mr. Barrett, I am going to ask uh, that you withdraw those, those comments, please. Alleged corruption by a corrupt government. Okay, thank you, Mr. Barrett. You, that you have withdrawal. had. That was not a withdrawal, Mr. Chair. That was a doubling down. We got a, uh, we've got a point of order from Mr. Vilmier. Go ahead, Mr. Vilmier. Allez, s'il vous plaît. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Tous les... Thank you, Mr. Chair. All committee members have accepted to hear from Mr. Boissonneau so that he can explain the situation. And I can't currently understand because everyone's talking on top of each other. That's what I said when we started. I don't want this to descend into a point where, you know, everybody's talking over each other. Um, and I, I'm going to enforce that from this. Uh, well, I've been enforcing it, but I'm going to enforce it from this point forward. It's just it means that we're going to be wasting our time here and, and uh, not being able to a ask the questions that we want. Mr. Barrett, you've had 34 seconds. Uh, do you have a question for Mr. Boissonneau? Because I want to give him an equal amount of time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Through you, Chair, we'll give the Minister an opportunity for uh, transparency. For a first, Minister, will you provide this committee a copy of the letter notifying in writing that you wanted to be removed as a director from this company? And further, will you provide any financial records related to, to this company? Um, will you provide them to the committee? Mr. Chair, there is a well-established practice done by the Ethics Commissioner that every single member around this table has to go through. The standards are higher for parliamentary secretaries and ministers. I have followed that process to the letter. All of those documents were provided to the Commissioner of Ethics. And Mr. Chair, the Ethics Commissioner sent me and Mr. Barrett a letter indicating that there was no need. He took the decision that there's no need to look into my business affairs, no need to evaluate them. I have followed the letter to the rule, the Thank rule to the letter. You. Thank you, Mr. Boissonneau. Uh, Mr. Barrett, Ms. Damoff, you have six minutes. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Chair. And before I start, I, I just have a point of order. Mr. Cooper has just called me disgusting. And I would ask that he please remove that uh, from, from, I mean, it's not appropriate. I, I, I'm sorry. I was dealing point, with other issues. Point, point of order. I, I, well. I didn't point of order. I didn't hear it, Ms. Damoff. He's done it I'm twice, sorry. Chair. Okay. Point of well, order, I didn't Mr. Hear Chair. It, so those who live, I, I apologize. Mr. Chair, those, those who live Mr. in glass houses should be very okay. careful That's about not throwing a point stones. Of order, Mr. It Clark, is, because Ms. Damoff used the very same language towards my colleague, Mr. Cooper. I heard it very clearly on more than one occasion, Chair. Right. So the Chair did not hear it, because I was obviously busy dealing with some other issues. Uh, so I'm going to ask Ms. Damoff that you continue for uh, six minutes. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so as to not interrupt her time? On, the, on a point of order, Mr. Barrett. Uh, at the conclusion of, uh, it's a practice at, at other committees and this one in the past, that when there's a request for documents made, mm -hmm. that the, there's confirmation by the clerk um, to the witness the information that's been requested. So is the committee to understand that the witness will provide the documents that were requested to the committee or not? Uh, Mr. Rossino, uh, will you provide those documents that have been requested by Mr. Barrett? Mr. Chair, I was very clear in my answer. Any documents related to my affairs as a private citizen before becoming a public office holder have been provided to the Ethics Commissioner and his team, and they have looked at those documents, and the Ethics Commissioner has included there is no need to evaluate my business affairs, point à la ligne. Okay. So if, if, the, uh, if the committee feels compelled to request those documents, you can do, the, do so when uh, you have the floor, Mr. Baer. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Damoff, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, on May 7th, CSIS uh, reported that disinformation is the biggest threat to Canadians, and more than 84% of Canadians are somewhat concerned with this issue. And I find it really... Dis, dis, I'm really disheartened that the Conservatives would prefer to go on a witch hunt um, against a minister of the Crown versus continuing and finishing our study on misinformation and disinformation. Minister Bosino, in your time between uh, your last elected position and your most recent election, I'm to understand it was, it was how long? I was elected in 2015 and I lost the 2019 election and I won the 2021 election. So in two years, you created a company that was essentially a consultancy, is that correct? Uh, no, I had a consultancy from about 1999 until the time that I was first elected in 2015 when I made sure that the so company... in your two years, 
What was the nature of the business that you created here? So I didn't create a new business, Mr. Green. I simply restarted my business, Zenex, which is a management consultancy. And as I indicated to Mr. Vilmur, I had many uh, clients. And my forte, if you can what use that. What experience did you have? What experience did you have in, in procurement and PPF? So with respect to that company, which I have no more work to do uh, with, um, we were at the time of a pandemic. And we were at the time of uh, a great What call. experience did you have prior to this procurement that involved PPF and procurement. 15 years in business, Mr. Internet. Green. I was able to um, make sure that we had um, products supplied to my community. I had a 15 years in business. This was a decision to start a business. There were tens of thousands of businesses started up during the pandemic to help our country and our community. And this business was one of them. Okay. So you got into procurement to take advantage of the opportunities that were presented in COVID, perhaps your relationships with the Liberal government. Wouldn't go, um, I wouldn't say that. And you had... Well, I'm sure, order, Chair. Mr. Boissonneau, Mr. Green was in the middle of his intervention asking a question. I'm going to ask that you let him finish, and you'll be given an equal amount of time to respond. Mr. Green, go ahead. I did stop your call. In your, in your earlier testimony, you stated that the Gowie Group had no contact uh, and that the article states in reference to the text that they mentioned around you. It is stated in this article that you've referenced to refute Mr. Um, to the Conservatives' claims that it was Gouley's understanding that Anderson was referring to Bosino, whom Anderson had told her was a partner at GHI and a public official, a representative of Gouley Group, wrote in a statement. So there's an obvious contradiction here that is public. And while it is true you may want to appear before this committee and act as though this is simply a conservative witch hunt. I would tell you from my perspective as a New Democrat, this doesn't pass the sniff test. So please explain this very obvious contradiction between your testimony and what is being stated here. Mr. Chair, thanks, Mr. Green. And Mr. Chair, through you to Mr. Green, um, there are some uh, baseless comments in your intervention. And let me just be really clear. I had nothing to do with the Gaia Group. I have no uh, ongoing um, role in this company and I haven't since I was elected. The article itself, and I'll repeat, says we have had no direct communication with Mr. Boissonneau at any point in our dealings with Stephen and the companies. That's from the Gowie Group. Mr. Anderson confirmed in the article that I am not the Randy in question. And so uh, I would also say that, you know, you, you put words in my mouth and said, take advantage. I never said that. And nor did I say the W word, because I'm very careful to use that word. I am here to answer questions, as the Ethics Committee has asked okay, me to do. And sir, listen. Sure. Um, that's all that's all great but you're providing contradictory testimony the nature of your dealings with a business model that you have no previous experience with given the case of the uh, the size and the scope of their procurement raises questions to the average canadian it raises questions to an objective person looking at this deal when in your own testimony you're stating you're not even aware of who the ownership is so who is the other randy so, Mr. Green, I stated this earlier to Mr. Barrett. I do not know the name of this person. I have no operational role in that company. I do not have um, any line of sight to who operates the company. And I would not be able to because of the very strict rules in ethics. And I will state very clearly that I had 15 years of business experience with okay, clients. I'll and I was state able very to, clearly, sir, I was able to translate that you decided that to, to, to list Kristen Poon's company as 205087 Alberta Limited on your disclosure forms and not include the trade name of the Navis Group. That, to me, sir, no matter how much you want to obfuscate, looks like looks like a, a, a mission that is intentional. So would you uh, agree that receiving direct payments uh, from a regi registered lobbyist would, would appear to show a conflict of interest? No, Mr. Green, two things there. Um, when I was a private citizen, I worked with a company, a numbered company, that after I became uh, elected, uh, changed its trade name to the Navis Group. And moreover, um, it, I was required to use the legal name of the company in my ethics disclosure forms, and that was a directive by the commissioner's team. And when I first did my uh, my 
disclosure with the ethics commissioner, as I explained to Ms. Damoff, uh, the company that I was aware of was still the numbered company, and uh, I wasn't aware Mr. of Bosino, the name change. Mr. Bosino, I've operated a business myself, sir, and in these types of disclosures, you would put an operating as. You would put an operating as to give disclosure about the nature of the company so it could be cross-referenced against procurement. So why then have a deferred payment arrangement made? And how long will you be receiving payments from the Navis Group? Mr. Green, just to be clear, it was very stated uh, in a response to um, Global News by the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commission that they required me to use the numbered company, uh, not the operating name. And when I worked with that numbered company, it did not have an operating as. It was simply a numbered company. But I filled out those sheets too. You could put it in the section, operating as. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to be forthcoming or not. I think I've answered this question, and it was a requirement. Very, very quick response. It was a requirement to use the numbered company, and I have provided all information regarding my financial affairs and my business affairs okay. to the Ethics Commissioner, Thank you. who has said there's no need to look into my affairs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, that completes round one. We're going to go to the uh, five-minute rounds, uh, and then two and a half, two and a half. Uh, just a reminder, equal time of question for equal time of answer. I don't want anybody interrupting each other. Wait till the question is asked, wait till the answer is given, and if I have to intervene, uh, I will, uh, in order to move along. Mr. Cooper, you have five minutes. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Minister Blasno, you held the title of partner at GHI before you were elected, correct? I recall, I actually can't remember that, but uh, partner was you, the title that I used while okay. I was operating the company. Th thank you. Mr. Cooper. Thank you for confirming that. And uh, just at, at GHI is not exactly a ma big, big operation. Uh, there was you, there was Anderson, and there were a few employees, correct? Correct. And so I pose to you, through you, Mr. Chair, then who was the other Randy? I do not know who the other Randy was. They were somebody hired Thank after you. You I was... You, you but claimed I do not know no, who that person was, is, Mr. Four Chair. seconds, four seconds. Mr. Sure. Cooper, go ahead. You, you have a 50% stake in the company. Uh, there's only a handful of people there, and you presently have a 50% stake in GHI, and you mean to tell me that you have no idea out of a handful of people, if not you, who the other Randy is. Are you serious? 20 seconds. Go ahead, Minister. I have had no operational involvement in this company since I was elected. The company has hired and probably let go people since I was there. I am not allowed to know about the operation of this company, Mr. Cooper, because it is not permitted by the Minister, Ethics Commissioner, Minister, and so I followed you, all the thank rules. Thank you for that. Uh, Minister, that is nonsense, and you know it, but I'm going to go It's not to nonsense, Mr. Mr. I, Chair. Mr. That, is Mr. Not, that is not a fair statement. It's not nonsense. It is the Let truth. him finish, please, Sir. Mr. Vossano. Go ahead, Mr. Cooper. Mr. Your answer simply doesn't add up, but it, 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 there's more to it than that, because if, if it's some other Randy, then why did the Gowie group believe that the Randy referenced in the text messages was you? Why? Fifteen seconds, Minister. Mr. Chair, it would be inappropriate for me to have anything to do with operational matters. I stepped away from the company in the fall of 2022. Of course, I don't know who the employees are. And in why, the article why today, it, why it says it, that Minister, I am not doesn't that up. Randy. Doesn't, doesn't. He's got three seconds. Go ahead, Minister. I am not the Randy in this article, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Cooper. Doesn't, doesn't add up, Minister. And uh, if it's not you... How is it that Global News couldn't verify who Verandi was? Uh, Anderson said it was there was some other Randy in charge of logistics, but uh, when Global News looked into it, they found that the guy who held himself out as responsible for logistics is one Edward Anderson, not a Randy. Mr. Cooper, I have no operational relationship to that company, and so the matters of staff are not in my purview. And let me state again for the record, from this morning's article, from the Gowie Group, we have had no direct communication with Mr. Bossano at any point in our dealings with Stephen and the companies, and Mr. Anderson has said that that Randy is not me, and I have not received any communication Mr. from Mr. Cooper, through, go ahead. Through, this you, group. through you, Mr. Chair, Minister, in looking at the text message from Randy... To Anderson, it states it's 1514 Eastern Standard Time. This is a text to someone who is in Alberta in a text message about a client in California. 
what is the, what is 1514 Eastern Time? Well, it happens to be the time zone of Ottawa. Just another coincidence, Randy? <laughs> I mean, I have no idea because I did not receive those texts, and I have no operational relationship to this company. Be, be, be and available it's for a time Mr. Zone Mr. Cooper, just let him text. respond, please. It's a time zone and a text that I have nothing to do with. Well, Mr. Anderson never, has said that's not it's an me. Upper, it's an Mr. Gowie, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. 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 Cooper, Chair, Mr. Cooper, I am not being interrupted. Up. Mr. Cooper, just, he's got uh, like eight seconds. Let him respond, please. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Thank Blossom, you, Mr. Chair. You I am question. not the Randy in question. Mr. Anderson has indicated that I'm not the Randy in question, and the Gowie group Mr. has said they've had Mr. no Cooper, communication with Mr. Cooper, go ahead. And uh, so not only, you know, Eastern Time, Ottawa, uh, also be available in 15 for a partner call. You said you had previously been a partner. Just another coincidence? Just another Randy? The operational word in your statement, Mr. Cooper, is previously. I ceased to be uh, an officer and a director of GHI in October of 2021, full stop. Ed, you got 25 seconds. Minister, the Gowie Group thinks it's you. Global News can't track down who the other Randy is. The, the Randy who's texting happens to be referencing Eastern Time. You happen to be uh, a member of Parliament serving a lot of your time in Ottawa. You said you were a partner. The text message references a partner. This is a small operation. You have a 50% stake in the fact that you can't identify who the other Randy is doesn't pass the smell test. Thank and you. if there isn't another Thank Randy, you, then you, sir, broke the law. <laughs> Mr. Thank Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Ma may I That's respond, the, Mr. Chair? It's the end of the time. You can respond in, in the next round. Mr. Sure. Fisher, go ahead, five minutes. Go ahead. Can I start with a point of order? Like, you're out of order, Mr. Cooper. No, you can't I, Mr. make Fish, that's comments not a, like that. That's no, not a point I, I, of order. Okay. That's not a point of Mr. order, point Mr. Of order. Mr. Fisher. Minister, when was the last time you had a conversation with Kristen Poon? Um, earlier this week, we are friends, and we've known each other for 15 years. So you chat. Uh, how would you? How frequently would you um, suggest that you are in communication with Ms. Poon? I mean, depending on the, the the time of the year or what's going on in uh, in our friend circle, we would communicate um, uh, a couple of times a month, perhaps, if not more. And Ms. Poon is a registered lobbyist. She is no longer a registered lobbyist. My understanding is that her registry, um, she ceased to be a lobbyist in June of 2022. And you received payments from her prior to that? Th th that is not true. Um, what, is, what happened is that um, work that I did while I was a private citizen, um, we made sure that all of the dealings that I had as a private citizen when was were the last provided payment to you received the from Commission of Ethics. When was the last payment you received? Mr. Green, you know that there's a process for that, and that information is with the Commissioner of Ethics, and the Commissioner of Ethics... So you're refusing to answer a basic question, Randy, that would help provide uh, some, some light to this topic? When was the last time you received money from her? There were no... Um, um, that... Um, no, no monies were received by any company that I'm responsible for from uh, Ms. Poon in 2024. That wasn't the question I asked. When was the last time you received money? 2023? Mr. 2022? Mr. Green, when was that it? matter is with the Conflict of Interest Commission. I provided everything to them, and the Ethics Commissioner has said there's no need to look into my affairs. Well, that's, um, that's great. We'll, we'll talk to him next and certainly look at the, the loopholes that are in that. Why did you decide to have a deferred payment arrangement? Mr. Green, that is a relationship that was done while I was a private citizen, and I shared all that information with the Ethics Commissioner. The Ethics Commissioner has Did you not receive money while you were a private citizen? Have, there's no need to look into my business affairs. Did you not receive payment while you were a private citizen? Um, the, I received income as a private citizen while I was making a living as a business person, yes. So at some point, you decided with a deferral agreement, when did you make that decision? Uh, Mr. Green, that information has been provided to the Ethics Commissioner. The Ethics Commissioner has looked at my business affairs and said there's no need to look into them. Has a CRA? Hold on, Mr. Green, I've stopped the clock. I, I have a point of order from Mr. Barrett. Does, uh, does the Procedure Committee not require that a witness answer a question? Not knowing the answer to a question, providing an answer that isn't satisfactory to the member asking, are, are, not, uh, are, are not open to, to debate. However, refusing to answer a question Thank of a parliamentarian at committee is and has been found to be a contempt of, of, uh, of the parliamentarian's right who has put the question. So, Chair, yep. a refusal to answer a question, it is, it is a fact that that is not permissible 
I, I put to you, Chair, that the Minister is refusing Mr. to Chair, answer I the member's question, to question and, today. and, and that's you, not Mr. acceptable. Mr. That's, that's yeah, not Mr. acceptable. Mr. Baer, we dealt with this with Mr. Warnick, and I certainly, when he was here, I clearly stated that the expectation of the committee is that the witnesses will provide an answer to the question. I'm going to leave it to, uh, to Mr. Green here in the very short period that he has left to conclude this round, and then we're going to go to uh, quick second rounds, or other rounds here, but the expectation sure, the expectation uh, is that the ministers will answer, and then it'll be up to the committee to decide uh, if they're not satisfied with those those answers, then they can take action. On Mr. the same Barrett. point of order, go ahead, Mr. Yeah. McKinnon. Uh, thank Sorry, you. Uh, Mr. Green. Thank we got you, Mr. Point. Chair. I would I would uh, like to comment that the minister has not uh, refused to answer any questions. He's yeah. The that's that's is, debate. That's debate, I'm Mr. McKinnon. I'm responding to the point of order. Yeah. I, the allegation is false. He's given answers. He just okay, they just don't that. like the answers. Thank on you. the point of order, sir. Okay, uh, Mr. Green, on the point of order, go ahead. Given that I'm the, the, the part of the topic of the point of order, I reserve the right to um, to also submit to you, sir, that uh, that he has refused to provide answers to this committee. He's done it on multiple occasions in, in two minutes and 23 seconds. And, and I would like to say that that is a, uh, what I would consider to be a breach of the powers of this committee. And uh, I would su suggest to you that nobody, whether they be a parliamentary secretary or a cabinet minister, is above the procedures of a standing committee. And that is why he's here before us, Mr. Chair. So I would ask through you on this point of order that the member provide in writing, uh, and he can refer to the Hansard for the subject of the questions that I've asked him, a response, sir, failing to do which puts him in breach, in my opinion, to the standing orders and powers of this committee. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Green. And, and on that, uh, I am going to uh, ask the clerk on behalf of uh, yourself, sir, uh, to review the Hansard and to submit uh, the questions that have been asked of Mr. Boissonneau uh, and have him respond to the committee. Um, and uh, Madam Clerk, uh, just make a note of the, uh, the time on that. And uh, I will ask. How much time do I have left in my you have, round? You have 15 seconds by my clock, but uh, okay, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask that you continue, sir. Go ahead. With my 15 seconds left, I would say that in the opening remarks, the minister suggested that somehow this was a conservative witch hunt. I would share with you that as a new Democrat Mr. and somebody Chair, responsible I said no such thing. for, uh, as a, a um, person on this committee, on the Ethics Committee, and a proud New Democrat, I'd share that's not the case. And I just say, Randy, your testimony today has not helped you out. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Green. Uh, we're going to go to Mr. Brock. I am going to limit it to three-minute interventions at this point. I apologize to the committee for that, followed by Mr. Housefather, and that'll conclude uh, the time that we have. That'll take us to 12.06, which is roughly the time where we started uh, not taking into account many of the interruptions that we've had. Mr. Brock, I'm going to give you three minutes. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Chair. Um, with, with respect, Minister, I, I share MP Green's uh, uh, latter comments that your testimony has not been helpful. In, in fact, not only have you been disrespectful, you um, are exhibiting traits in my old career that I would classify as a lying witness. You've been evasive. That's not appropriate, Mr. Chair. Well, it is. That is not a, that's not parliamentary language. Uh, I, would, uh, I would suggest, Mr. Brock, that you not use that language. Uh, You've got the inability to tell the straight facts and to tell the straight goods, uh, Minister. There, there lacks the ring of truth in what you have to say. Go ahead on your point of order, Mr. Point of order, Mr. Brock's language is definitely unparliamentary. He, he needs to withdraw it, and he needs to apologize. No. I'm not withdrawing, Chair. No, he, uh, Mr., he, he used a different context. I'm going to allow him to do it. I'm going to ask him to continue. You've got a couple minutes, Mr. Brock. Go ahead. Sorry, Mr. on the same point of order. Go I've, ahead, Ms. Damoff, on the same point of order. I've heard in the House many times the Speaker mm. say that you can't say indirectly what you, or you yeah, you, that you can't say directly, and that is exactly mm. what Mr. Brock has did and has done. And we cannot call each other so, liars or providing untruths to Parliament. I appreciate that. I think Mr. Brock uh, understands your point of order. I'm going to ask him to continue for the next couple of minutes. Go ahead. And, and Canadians are watching. They they take particular attention every time a minister appears at committee. And and what you've done, sir, is just displayed a complete lack of respect for policies and procedures at this committee, leaving aside 
the evasiveness of your responses and clearly the lack of ring of truth, as I've indicated. So on the issue of what was uh, reported this morning in the global, global news, did you take it upon yourself to reach out to your former partner and ask for clarification as to who this other Randy was? Um, so, Mr. Brock, on that particular point, yes I have no or no, sir. Did you reach? Role. I've got three minutes. I have seconds to sir, respond to I have your. Got, I've Mr. Got Mr. Got Chair, three I point of order, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Brock, just uh, allow the minister to respond to the question. I know that we're on short timelines here, but please allow Mr. Boissonneau to uh, respond to that. Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Point. I have no operational role in that company. I am not the Randy in the article today. And let me give you an example, Mr. Chair. I don't know why Mr. Brock received income from the province of Ontario while he's been serving as an MP, but I assume that he cleared that with the Ethics Commissioner in the same way that I, cl Mr. I cleared my business dealings with the Ethics Mr. Commissioner and no investigation Thank or evaluation of my Brock. business affairs. Mr. Brock, go ahead. Go point ahead. Of, just a point of order, Mr. Chair. The question that Mr. Brock asked was well over a minute and the response was no, 25 the, minutes. I think he concluded. There was a question. <laughs> yes, sir, no. So I'll ask again, Minister. Ahead, Brock, you're yes. laughing at the whole process, no, uh, but I'm, Canadians are not laughing at no, you, sure. and they're not siding with you. Did you reach out to Mr. Anderson this morning after you read the Global News report? Yes or no? I am not the Randy in that report. Did you the call Mr. Say, Anderson? No, why would I call Mr. Anderson? I was not ready to know. Point so the answer is Mr. Anderson didn't want to provide Brock, a certain Mr. Brock, the survey. Mr. The Brock, ethics, the answer, Mr. The, he I said gave no. the answer. He said no. Um, Chair, I, are you I, on a point of order? Yes, Mr. I am, Chair. I, out of respect for our interpreters, and this keeps happening, people are interrupting. I agree. And it's it's so unfair to okay. the people that work so hard for us. Thank so you. if I, you could please yeah. just knock it off. I've made that I've made that very clear. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. You've got like literally 20 seconds, sir. Minister, will you provide to this committee details of your text messages for all the phones that were in operation on September the 22nd, 2022, so that this committee can determine if you are in fact the Randy that the text messages are referring to, the Randy that the other partner wants to communicate with? Will you reach out to your service provider and provide us with details okay. of your text messages on that day for all your devices? Minister, yes quick, no? quick response, Minister, Mr. please. Mr. Chair, I have nothing, I have no operational role in this company. I do not know who this Randy is. It is not me, and it's clear in the article okay. that it's not me. Thank you, sir. Um, so uh, I'm going to take that as a request from Mr. Brock, and request. again, I'm going to ask the clerk to uh, follow up on that uh, that request. Point Mr. House Father, you have four minutes. Go ahead, sir. Point of order. Uh, go ahead on your point of order, Mr. McKinnon. I'd just like to observe that a request from a member is not the same as a request from the committee. Well, we can follow up and ask. Um, and if Mr. Boissonneau decides uh, to submit the request from Mr. Brock, then he's, he's uh, capable of doing that. If he doesn't, then it's up to the committee to determine uh, which, which direction they're going to go on this, and that could include up to moving a motion on, on the matter. So uh, we can make the request. It's up to Mr. Boissonneau uh, to either uh, submit to the request or not. Uh, Mr. Housefather, you have... Um, Minister Boissonneau, do you know what the 28th most popular boy's name in 1956 was? <laughs> I do not. Randy. Huh. You know how many Randys were born that year? I do not. 28,000. That's a lot of Randys. A lot of Randys.